Okay. So uh, to get everything started, thank you for coming or joining us for Something Wicked Film Festival during our seventh year. Uh, so uh, just tell everyone, first of all, what your film is, who you are, and then what you did on your film. Uh, so our film is called Mothering Sunday. It's a dark comedy horror film. I'm the producer. I also wrote the script and I'm one of the actors in it. And the film is basically about this mother-daughter team who started off as bank robbers and their neighbor, Boris, was also helping them. Um, but Boris worked at this bank, so he kind of had the idea like, oh, this is how you're going to be able to get in. But then we got in and we've, we've been robbing banks. <laughs> and uh, but then Boris decided that he wanted he was feeling guilty and he wanted to tell on us. And we're like, oh, my goodness, uh, we can't have this happen. This is too, too good of what's going on here. We're getting too much money from all these banks that we're robbing. So uh, so we took Boris's head off and we put it in a jar. So he's still part of our team. And we've been doing really well, but now my daughter comes in and kind of tries to tell me that she wants to quit and maybe we should just go to the Cayman Islands and and maybe our time is up and that's it. And I just get so angry that I try to kill her, but she ends up killing me. Or does she? Uh... <laughs> we don't reveal too much. We got to have people watching the film too. <laughs> All right, so uh, what was some of the inspiration for this film? Um, well, in so I've been writing a lot, but I've been writing more drama and more kids shows. And I was in an acting class, and they gave us a challenge. Um, so we had to pick pick a genre out of a hat, and I picked horror. And I'm like, what horror? I can't write horror. Oh my goodness. You know, I don't like saying bad words. And <laughs> But then like I wrote this film and I was just like, all right, you know, I, I know a little bit about horror and I just have to make it really crazy. So I tried to make it as crazy <laughs> as possible and crazy and ironic. And I just had so much fun with it. And then we filmed it and I was just like, I love horror. This is so much fun. And I know, and then I started finding out like there's all these horror followers that love horror. And, and it's just this really big thing. I was just like, oh my goodness, I love it. So now I've been watching horror films and I've been really paying attention to it, trying to figure out how to make good horror films, going to all these workshops for horror because it really got me addicted. It's really fun. You know, your story is so interesting because it's the first time I've ever heard of it. So someone uh, having to write a horror, a horror short for class and, or uh, and then making one loving it. So <laughs> that is very interesting. That's why I have to ask these background questions because everyone has a different story. So I'm yeah. assuming you really you, now you like horror. Yeah, totally. I've already um, written another horror script and and I'm thinking about making this script into a full length movie, but um, oh. I'll start with the other one that's a, a short for uh, for now and try to get some funding for that. And then hopefully maybe I'll be able to get some funding for a full length movie and make this short that Mothering Sunday that's um, at the, so the, the Something Wicked Film Festival um, into a full length. Well, that's very interesting because you, the the title's great, so that would be great for a a new uh, horror uh, feature. So definitely keep that. <laughs> um. So what what is your what is your background then? What, what did you go to film school or did you just kind of learn on the fly or taking workshops? How, what's your background? That's a good question. Well, um, I started off. I've always wanted to be in films and make films ever since I was little, but I got more interested in the environment because well, I grew up in New Jersey and there were so many environmental things going on. Like we lived near the Hackensack Meadowlands. And when I found out about how um, 
there used to be like 350 species of fish. And then after all the pollution from um, the industrial age, they started just putting all these chemicals into the river, all the industrial companies. And, and then there was only like two species of fish left. And the ones that were alive were having like three eyes or extra gills or extra fins. And it was just, they weren't doing very well, which kind of ties into horror really in a way. Must say, there's the next horror film right there. Exactly. So I've just been destined, I think, to make horror films. So, so I, I started off as an environmental um, and worked as a professor for many years, but then started getting. Um, so I've done the work that I've done is is really important, like helping making parks and helping with rivers and clean things up. So the work that I've done is really, really important. But then I started thinking, but you know, I've always wanted to do films. I want to get back to it. So that's when I started taking acting classes and I started taking writing workshops and um, yeah. And then just started going from there. And now I'm just addicted. It's like, ah, that's it. That's it. I've dropped the whole uh, professor stuff and now I'm full into films like full time. Oh, wow. Well, that's good. Uh, that's impressive. So that's good. Uh, <laughs> um, so um, getting uh, a little bit uh, of some more of your background. So you felt gravitated towards mostly dramas and stuff first, right? That's right. And uh, so uh, <laughs> did you do a whole bunch of films before doing this one that were in that genre? Uh, well, I've been working, working more on, um, on scripts because... Oh. I started with writing novels and um, I had one of my last environmental projects. I worked out in the Galapagos Islands for a couple months. And I don't know if you know, but that's kind of like Charles Darwin and the evolution of species, all that information. So they have these amazing tortoises out there. And on each island, the tortoises have different shells depending on what type of food was available. So if there was less food out, just to make it simple, like if there was less food, their shells are smaller. If there was a lot of food, their shells are bigger. If there was food, but the food was high up, like on the cactuses, and they had to reach up to get the cactuses, then their shells started changing shape so that their um, their necks got longer and they have this bend in their shells so they're able to reach up higher. So. This is all about, you know, and, and this happened over thousands and thousands of years. It's not like after just one from the mother to the to the kids. But um, yeah, so it was just really fascinating to me. And on the plane ride back, you know, that's when and I had met so many film people making films out in the Galapagos because it's just such a amazing place and they have so many amazing animals so started talking to a lot of the film directors and the filmmakers over there and that's when I remembered it's just like film is my thing now how am I going to get into film right how about I start by writing so I on that plane ride back from the Galapagos to New Zealand I just started writing a story and I just started writing and writing and I'm like this is it, you know, and then I started taking some <clears throat> novel writing classes and, and kids book writing classes and just and got into some critique groups. And ah, I was having so much fun, but I wasn't getting into film. I'm like, OK, I've got to get into film. And how am I going to do that? How about I start by taking some acting classes because then I can find out about all the behind the scenes and what's going on. So so I started with that and then. Yeah, so I've been working a lot of, on short films and I've been being um, acting in some TV shows in New Zealand and some movies. And and then I wrote that horror script and, and then I became really dedicated. I'm like, that's it, you know? So, I, so I've got Mothering Sunday out now. I'm also have produced another film called Proud Hooligan, which... Um, wouldn't fit at your film festival. And uh, in a couple of weeks, New Zealand has this thing called the 48 hour film festival. Yep, yep. And so we're gonna be participating in that too, but they give you the genre there too. So it's kind of like random draw out of a hat and then you have 48 hours to make this film. So uh, so that's gonna be really exciting. And Have you ever done a 48 hour? 
I, I have not done a 48-hour <laughs> before, so, um, but it's on it's the 12th to the 14th of August, so it's coming up soon. So I'm kind of already stressing out, like, oh my goodness, we have to have all the teams, and what do we have? And anyway. <laughs> yeah, fun. I've done several of them here in Georgia. Uh, they are extremely fun, and they are a, a little crazy, but as long as you have a good team, then you can finish your film, get it uh, submitted in, in, in on time, and then you just let the audience watch it and enjoy it because there is a little bit of chaos in being given the genre. And I don't know if it's the same uh, in New Zealand, but uh, we could given a, jo- a genre, uh, the the prop, and then the line that has to be said. Uh, so it's always uh, quite funny to watch them in a, with a big audience. So Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you have more experience with them than me, but... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, so I'm I'm already stressing out about it, and it's a couple weeks away. But the director that we're working with, he's like, just just calm down. It's gonna be okay. It doesn't matter. We're gonna get this film made. It's yeah. gonna be okay. So, uh, what I'm hearing is that you've got a big writing background. So, are you gravitating more towards the writing aspect of filmmaking, or are you trying to be a director, or do you really enjoy the act? aspect or producing which one do you kind of gravitate more towards that's a good question i i would say i love organizing and i love writing so i think producer (laughs) i really like producing but i really love writing but at the same time i'm having a lot of fun acting so um, (laughs) i don't know (laughs) i'm gonna go with those three for now but um yeah no i definitely i i always been an organizer i've organized i remember even when i was in high school i organized trips and i'd organize all the food for all the trips and everything and the locations where we go and and scouting out locations i I really feel like all this stuff that i've done in the past has really just made me a really good fit for being a producer You never know if you're a good producer until after you've been on the film and you realize all those skills that you've acquired over the years are what you need as a good producer. <laughs> I was the same way. I was I was coming in as a, I wanted to be a director and writer. And then I realized I was really good at organizing. Hence, I'm doing a film festival. <laughs> I was really good at organizing, so I became like a production manager, line producer, slash producer. I, and, and now a film uh, festival co festival director and program director, so yeah, just something we grow into. We don't realize it to the you know until it's upon us. So yeah, yeah. Well, and you know, people like you are an inspiration for me to maybe someday I should start a film festival too. <laughs> I find the uh, see I the reason why I do a film festival is I love I love to talk and meet up with filmmakers from all different uh, walks of life. The, I hate to say it, but COVID was actually beneficial for us because we were used to doing these interviews with only the people who came to our events. But because of COVID, we did the Zoom thing, and now I'm meeting people from all over the world. So this was yeah. this is much different than what we were doing before, and I actually enjoy this a little bit more because now I'm getting your perspective of filming there in New Zealand. I had a uh, um, one of the filmmakers was from Mexico that we spoke with earlier. They, I had a couple in California. Their their predicament is different than ours, considering that they have a little bit more of a, a industry there with people who are willing to give them money, and they have more stars that you know to pull from. So the, the different the different places you're from will allow you to uh, to grow as a filmmaker in different ways. So being in New Zealand, you're learning a different way of, of becoming a filmmaker because uh, your background isn't like going to a film school. <laughs> you're like. <laughs> You came in as you know. You started off with writing, and then you started learning. Uh, then you got into acting, and it's it's your, your, your story's interesting. It's different. It's different. Yeah, yeah. Well, they do do have drama schools here, and they do have you, you can take film at some of the universities around here. So it's not it's not like it's not available. I just went a different path. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess it doesn't matter. Everybody comes into film from all different ways, so. Yep, look at Quentin Tarantino. He just watched movies from a video store and became a filmmaker. Come on. <laughs> so, so, um, awesome. so tell me something interesting about what happened on the film set. Was there any challenges that you faced as a filmmaker on this that you had so many hats? 
Um, well, because this was really the first one that I had produced, uh, we had gotten uh, in, in my class, luckily in my acting class, we had a director that was keen to direct and we had a, a DOP who was keen to film. And both of them had a real lot of experience. So they were able to bring in some of their other colleagues because at that point in time, which, you know, it wasn't that long ago, but now it seems like ages ago, like I wasn't exactly sure how much was involved in, in making a film. Like I knew people were, you know, filming and I knew we had all the actors and I knew we had the makeup people, but um, I didn't know about how much besides behind the scenes work really goes into it. <laughs> and such the importance of like, sound. Sound is mm -hmm. so important in film. And and I never really thought too much about that before. And uh, yeah, so, so it was a really good experience. Um, but at the same time, they were, it was almost like a workshop for me, I'd say, because I just learned so much on that, in that, uh, in the filming of this show. And I, I wasn't, you know, so I wasn't, I was the organizer and that I was able to organize everything, but the more experienced people were get, get better teams together, get more of the team together, the part of the team that I didn't really know about that we needed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, also, uh, since we got some of the most challenging aspects of shooting a film, and this is very interesting because you know, like you said, you're 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 new to all this, so you're learning as you go along about all the different uh, requirements of a film shoot. Uh, what was uh, something that was um, that was exciting about shooting this movie, other than the fact that you were starring in it? <laughs> um, well, I found that uh, we had an art director. And she did an amazing job of, because I had, I can actually go get, I'll be right back in two seconds. Okay. <laughs> So I love Halloween and I've always loved Halloween. It's not really that big here. So I've had to, like I've been doing Halloween parties and one year I decided I was going to do a haunted house. Again, all leading back to this horror. <laughs> it's all leading me to horror and films. So I made this, <laughs> I ate this head in a jar and we've been calling him Boris. So... <laughs> Like I, I brought this with me to the film because I didn't know what we were really gonna have. And then I find like the art director, she had gotten a mask of this former president that she really doesn't like, uh, who I shall not name, but um, yeah. And she just painted all this blood all over it. And then she got it into the jar and it had like the hair and, it just looked really good. And then she got like cut these things up to make it look like fingers and jars. And um, I was really impressed <laughs> with how good it looked. And I liked how it's like, because I wasn't the one doing the filming. And then after I saw the film, like they kept turning the head of Boris. So Boris was always facing the camera. And I hadn't yeah. noticed that when we were filming, but because they did that, I think it makes the film more, I don't know, exciting. Like he's always looking at the camera. It's like Boris is always, I mean, he's part of our team. He's part of our bank robbing team. So of course we still have to talk to him, but um, I love that he's always facing the camera or facing the person that he's talking, he, that's talking to him. It's the little things that that the audience will pick up and like, is Boris talking to him? Them? He's in a jar and he's always okay. That's a little creepy, but yeah, 
<laughs> I'm sure someone was on set keeping track of every place he was looking at for every camera angle. Yeah, yeah. And that was something that, you know, I hadn't really thought about. But because they did that, I thought that that was such a great idea because it made it more creepy. I think it made it more creepy. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. <laughs> so um, now that I'm, uh, I'm talking about this, uh, uh, how long did it take you to film the film, uh, make the film? Uh, in shooting wise, principal photography actually. Um, so the filming part, the filming day, we filmed it in one day. Oh wow! Uh, and luckily, because in New Zealand we keep having these lockdowns where you can't leave your house. Sometimes you can't leave your house, or you can just go out, but you can't really talk to any other people. Um, we filmed it right before a lockdown. It was like the weekend right before a lockdown, and after that everybody just had to stay home so because of that we had all the footage the editor had time to <laughs> edit the film and people had time to make the music for the film and that that's another thing that i really realized is the importance of music and having good music because if you have good music it can sound really creepy <laughs> Or, you know, nice, depending on the type of film you're going with. But if you're going for horror, the the music can make it, can really make it. It's very well, impressive. Music sets the atmosphere and the tone for your movie. So it's for a horror movie, it's very important. It is, it is. So it's just, yeah, the whole thing has just been, I feel like I'm always learning every day, learning new things. And yeah. But that's good. You should learn something all the time. Yeah. So Whether you're in film or not film, learning every day. It's a good thing. <laughs> and using that knowledge of stuff that you learn uh, in your writing and then the rest of your filmmaking, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, since this is the, the, the your first film as a producer, right? That's uh, right. How, how long have you been making films in general? Has it just been something you've wanted to do or have you been making them, but this is your first film as a producer? You've just been acting beforehand? Yeah, that's right. So I was acting and I had been writing, but I hadn't pursued trying to get anything that I was had written um, onto, the, onto the scene yet. So um, I'd say about since like, 2017 2018 okay is when i started um but this was the first film that i produced and wrote that was made and <laughs> and just the reactions from the people that have seen it so far it's just uh, i love it i just love when when people were watching the film for the first time and i was kind of watching the audience watching the film and it's just such a great feeling to to see everybody like laughing and and shrieking and like <gasps> you know and <laughs> I just I love it. I think it's such a great feeling. Yeah, and uh, if you continue in the horror genre, you're gonna get a lot more of that a lot easier than if it was a drama. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've yeah. been converted. You've been converted over. You're going to start making horror films and maybe the occasional sci-fi fantasy films uh, for the rest of your career. <laughs> I think I think you're correct. But um, <laughs> but I do have that kid story that I would love to get animated that I've been working on from oh. the Gal about the tortoises from the Galapagos Islands. So I will continue with that to get that into an animated movie. But... Um, for myself or and acting as a whore in a horror movie is so fun <laughs> <laughs> because you're just i don't know i feel like i love having haunted houses for halloween and i love doing stuff for halloween so i feel like acting in a horror film is just like continuously doing having halloween year round <laughs> It's the best uh, holiday, really. It's always been my favorite <laughs> holiday because you just dress up and, and have fun. And that's all that matters. You know, like sometimes I would always think like New Year's, especially when I was younger, was 
you know, you had to stay up till midnight. And then if you didn't have somebody to kiss at midnight, it was so depressing. And Christmas can get depressing, like if you don't have money for presents or, you know, you're not anywhere near family or a lot of people don't have any family. So Christmas can get depressing, but Halloween, it's just fun. <laughs> So uh, what I'd really love to see is you to do a Halloween film that takes place in New Zealand. <laughs> That's a good idea. I'll write that <laughs> idea down. <laughs> oh, my God. So uh, are, do you, because uh, you mentioned the animated movie, uh, do you have a background in animation at all? Or do you just have a story that you want to be animated eventually? I just have a story that I would okay. like to get animated. So the story is kind of like a cross in between Ice Age and Land oh. Before Time, like a um, and it's a it's a journey about these two tortoises, these brother and sister, and and how they become the first tortoises on the Galapagos Islands. So, oh, that's um, a great that's a great idea. Huh. Okay. Yeah, right. so it's it's really fun because um, I've done all this research when I was working over there. I was doing all this research about all the different animals that are over there and what's been around back in the day. And yeah, so it was just so interesting to me. And I thought, you know, if, we, if I could do an animated movie of this, it could not only be fun, a fun story and an action adventure for kids to watch. But at the same time, they'd be finding out about different animals that they might not know about and possibly could help some by, by them having an appreciation for these animals that maybe in the future, they'll find that animals are important to have around in relation to sustainability and, and endangered species. Yeah. Okay. That sounds like a really exciting project. Side project to your horror films, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that, that's not something that would play at one of your best this festival. <laughs> we do animation. We do animation. We do, uh, so if you don't know our background, we do everything that's not a comedy and a, a, a borderline normal comedy uh, and a uh, drama. So we are animation, horror, sci-fi, experimental, fantasy, and student film or fan film and student film festival. The reason being is uh, I used to run a normal film festival that we did international films where we did all genres, but I realized that trying to be that broad, we didn't get a very big turnout uh, yeah. of attendance uh, because we didn't have an identity of what type of genre it did. So when I ended that after three years, we decided to go with, you know what, let's do a genre film festival, get the people who really gravitate towards these specific genres. And so that's what we do. I will say this. Uh, I will say probably about 50% of our submissions are horror, which makes me believe that most every person out there loves to make horror films. <laughs> but we also get a huge amount of sci-fi films. So we kind of look at those two as like the bit, the, like the, the cornerstone of our genre uh, submissions. Uh, but animation, we still get a lot of, but not as much. Obviously, because animation takes more time. Uh, it takes a lot yeah. more effort. Uh, but we do get some amazing films in here with different types of styles. So when someone like you says you're, you were interested in doing an animated project, I hope that you're, you can go out there and find uh, a, a filmmaker or do it yourself um, and uh, be able to do your either short or feature based on your story uh, and not be hindered by the fact that animation is an art works uh an art style that then you have to do for film but computer animation programs out there there are tons of them that can allow you to do your story uh justice uh because i think it's a story worth doing um unless of course you just want to write it first and then try and produce it so yeah yeah well i'm not gonna learn animation there's too many things i'm already learning <laughs> Right. Like, I'm learning already enough right now. So, <laughs> no, that's fine. Uh, I think last year we had a feature animated film in which the husband and wife spent three years making it. So they oh, had, no. they had they took some. I, can't, I wish I could remember the program they used, but they essentially shot it like a, they were shooting a normal film, and then went over an animated rotoscope style, 
Uh, it oh. took them years to get through all of the footage. Uh, and then now they were now that they figured out all the bumps. <laughs> I, uh, I, yeah, yeah. When I interviewed them, I said they figured out the bumps, <laughs> and uh, now they're going to do the sequels, the second part of their trilogy, and not take as nearly as long. <laughs> Ah <laughs> uh, yeah yeah oh that's awesome uh but yeah I mean don't give up I mean animation's a, a a highly influential and stylized um art so uh, yeah. I I I could just see you doing uh, animation here horror there <laughs> and, okay, okay. and let's go do a horror but yeah that's an interesting spectrum interesting well spectrum. you know keep it keep it spicy. <laughs> Uh all right. Um <clears throat> uh we were, I, we were having such a conversation, I completely forgot what I was gonna ask you. <laughs> <laughs> Are you originally from Georgia? I am not. I am a military brat, so I've kind of lived a little bit of everywhere. I just ended up stopping uh moving uh here in Georgia and then of course most of my friends uh are from here and in the film industry, so but uh, I decided to start a film festival because there wasn't a film festival doing what I wanted to do. Uh, yeah. Georgia is known for lots of international film festivals, uh, but most of the film festivals here uh, screen a little bit of everything. There's, I think, two other horror festivals here, uh, but there's nothing like mine that's kind of doing all the genres, focusing on the uh, all focusing on all the genres except for your typical drama and comedy or yeah, romantic yeah. film um i wanted to do something different and then of course we actually do three film festivals a year uh we do this one and then we do our fan fest in which the theme changes every year um this year it's action thriller and animation last year it was like fan film post-apocalyptic film and westerns Oh, awesome. <laughs> and then we do a docu-fest. Uh, there's two of us here who love documentary, documentary and nonfiction films. So we kind of do that. When I, those two are on the side. We do those on the side because we love different types of genre film festivals. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you have to go out there. You have to start doing it. And you and like you're doing now, uh, you're act actually going out there and learning more by going to the film festivals, talking to other people, uh, because this is the perfect time to do it. You, you I mean... Right now, when there's so many opportunities like this out there where you can talk to filmmakers from all over the world or go to an event or do 48-hour film festival. That's a great opportunity to, 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 to uh, collaborate and work with other people that you haven't worked with before and learn new techniques. I'll tell you this right now. Um, I did three 48-hour films, and I have to admit that I met so many Georgia filmmakers when I did those three because I didn't produce any of them. I was cinematographer on one of them, a writer on another one, and I think I was cinematographer for the third one too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did different, a little bit of different things than I've done, and I just, you know, I learned as much as I could. You know. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what you got to do. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of, I was thinking that your accent wasn't, it wasn't a very strong Georgian accent. So I <laughs> might have lived in different places. <laughs> No one can ever figure out my accent because I don't really have one. <laughs> I will tell you this, and I don't think anyone who's uh, who uh, I've never revealed this to many people there. I don't think you can get an accent if you live in Louisiana, Alaska, Washington State, North Dakota, and Georgia. There is no way of getting an accent by living in those places. <laughs> Uh, I also lived in Alaska, so that's something we have in common. Excellent. Yes, yeah, so I spent five years of my life in there. I loved it. After it took me two years to get used to the cold. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, it has it been a pleasure talking with you, Pamela. Um, I would like to know if there's any last thing you'd like to leave the people with who are going to be watching your film and or watching this interview later. Without revealing any more details of the story because we want them to watch it <laughs> i just want to say that i'm really honored that we're able to that you're screening our film at your festival and it's so amazing to be able to have have our film be screened at places like your film festival that we're i think just the world now today that the way it is 
gives us so many more opportunities. And the same thing with this interview. I'm so honored to be able to to interview with you and, and meet you. I, it's so much more fun when you're able to talk to people. But exactly. since we're in New Zealand, it's it's hard to, to get up there all the way up north. Or are you down there, depending on the way you turn the globe? <laughs> We might be on the top and you're on the bottom. I don't oh, know. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so, yeah, that's all. I don't know. I wonder if I should start over and, and redo my uh, describing the film so I don't give too much of it away. I don't know. <laughs> uh, no, see, I will, I in the audience, this will forgive you because this is one of your first films as a producer where you uh, wrote and acted and did a little bit of everything in the film. Uh, when you say, when, and this will be good for you for the next time you do an interview for a film festival, you get, you'd be a little bit more ominous with the <laughs> description of your movie. Uh, and then with your next movie, you'd be even more ominous. I'm not going to tell you anything uh, other than it's about, uh, it, it, it's about a, a, a mother and daughter. And skull in the jar. <laughs> That's all I'm telling you. You got one the rest. I love that. I love that. <laughs> all right, Pamela. It's been great talking to you right now. Uh, <laughs> and I want to thank you for joining us for Something Wicked this year. <laughs> and thank you for having us, Kevin. It's really fun. You're welcome. Uh, and I look forward to seeing your next film. Uh, so uh, keep in, keep all of all all three of our film festivals in, in the loop. Uh, if you uh, if it doesn't fit this one, it might fit one of the other two. Okay, that sounds good. That sounds good. That's all awesome. right, you have a, you have a good evening. All right, you too. Bye. <laughs>